Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my January wrap up. I read 18 books in the month of January and I'm excited to share them with you. Um, so for my star rating breakdown, I had eight three stars, one three and a half star, six four stars, and three five stars. I'm usually pretty generous with my ratings, so the fact that I had more three and three and three and a half star reads than I did four or five star reads is very sad. Um, the same thing happened to me last January. I feel like I just didn't have a great January reading month. Um, don't get me wrong. Some of these books were obviously great, but, um, I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to share them with you and share with you, um, the ones I really loved. So I'm just going to go in chronological order. The first book that I read in the month was Mine for Yours by Harlow Ray. And I gave this book three stars. This is a single dad romance and I think a single mom romance. So Ryan moves back home with her son after her brother has passed away and she inherits his half of this bar that he owns and it is her romance with the um, guy who owns the other half of the bar who is also a single dad and was her brother's best friend. This book just was missing a lot for me. I didn't feel the romance. I didn't I don't know. Um, I have vlogs on a lot of these books if you want to hear my thoughts as I'm reading them, so I will link them down below. Um, but yeah, this one just didn't really wow me. Then I read Feels Like Love by Jenna Hartley, and I gave this one four stars. Um, this is a single mom romance. Rin is ready to fall in love, but she didn't date very much before getting pregnant with her son um, when she was a teenager. And so she has almost no dating experience. And Bennett has been best friends with Rin's older brother for basically their whole childhood. And so Rin has always been in his life and is a good friend of his as well. He's always been attracted to Rin, but he knows he's supposed to see her as a little sister, but doesn't. And so when Bennett's house is getting renovated, he actually has to move in with Rin and her son. And then she convinces him to be her dating coach since she has no dating experience. And so obviously it's their romance and this one was really cute. I'm excited to continue on with the series. And then I read Never Enough by Kelly Elliott. This is the first book in a small town series by her. Um, and I gave this one three and a half stars. So Lincoln moves to Hamilton, Montana and buys a house on a ranch owned by the Shaw family. And that is how she meets the previous owner, Brock Shaw. Um, he kind of has a bad attitude and he is a famous bull rider. They get off on the wrong foot, but she um, really has a good relationship with his five-year-old son. And even though Brock has a kind of dark past and doesn't want to give out his heart again, he can't help but be attracted to her. And so before long, she's going to his competitions and he wants her there um, for all of the future competitions. But he has a past where the person that he's with doesn't want to be with him because of his bull riding career. And so he's really worried that that is going to interfere with their relationship. But she doesn't see it that way and really supports him. Um, this one was okay. It just was missing something for me. I did listen to it on audio and I didn't like the narrator. So that could have a lot to do with it as well. But yeah, I don't know if I'll continue on in that series. Then we have The Words by Ashley Jade. I gave this one four stars. If you don't know what this one is about yet... It is a rock star romance who is completely out of control and they need somebody to kind of reel him in and so they hire the girl whose heart he broke in high school who absolutely hates him and is like she will not fall in love with him. That's the problem is everyone they hire like sleeps with him and causes problems and so they're like she won't, she's the one person who won't sleep with him. So they hire her and of course they fall in love. This book was good, it just was way too long and not in like a sense that it just was too long. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I love everything about a long book and I still feel like it's too long. But this one, I feel like how do we cut out a lot of the story? It still would have been just as great. There was a lot of side plot, but that actually is kind of where I thought things got interesting. So I don't know. There just was a lot of unnecessary stuff in this, I feel like. So I gave it four stars. Then I read Frayed by Laura Pavlov. I am going to do a guide to Laura Pavlov as soon as I finish. A couple more books in her backlist but so I'm not going to talk about these too much but this is the first book in her 
Willow Springs series. This one is young adult. This one takes place in high school. So Addie is a senior and has plans to go to college. Her her parents want her to go to and pursuing the career that kind of has just been pushed upon her. And she's dating her mom's best friend's son. And she kind of just decides she's done with all of it. Um, her boyfriend cheats on her and so she dumps him. And then her mom and her boyfriend's mom really push her to forgive him and get back with him. And oh, he's just a guy. And she's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not okay with it. So um, she kind of finally finds herself and stands up for herself. And then Jet Stone comes from like complete opposite family of uh, than Addie. Um, his mom had him as a teen. And so Jet fights on the side to make money, like illegally fights to make money to help pay rent. Um, and he's always kind of just been there in Addie's life, like in her classes and anyway. But now that she is single, he is interested and their friendship kind of becomes more. Um, this one was good. I gave it four stars. It was good for what it was, um, being that it was a young adult romance. But it made me excited to continue on with the rest of the series. The series follows a group of five friends. They call themselves the Magic Willows because their initials spell the word magic and they live in Willow Springs. Then I read Crow by A. Zavarelli. This is book one in her like mafia romance series. I don't remember the name of the series. I gave this one three stars. Um, Mackenzie decides to kind of go undercover and find out secrets of the Irish mafia to find her friend who has gone missing. Um, and then it is her romance with Lachlan who was like one of the leaders in the mafia. And it was okay. Um, it wasn't my favorite mafia romance I've read. I am intrigued about the hero in book two so I might pick up book two um but this one just I don't know there was a lot more violence than I was expecting which like I know it's a mafia book I am well aware of that it didn't like bother me it just was more than I was expecting and I didn't really love their romance like I liked the setup of it I liked the idea of the plot but I didn't feel the love between them if that makes any sense okay then I read The Playbook by Kelly Elliott and I gave it this one four stars. This is about the football coach for the University of Texas and a journalist who is sent to write a what up like write an article about him basically. And so she is supposed to completely follow him around for a week or two and learn everything about him. This is supposed to be like a deep dive into who he is as a person, not just about like his coaching abilities. And they've met before and they kind of have a little bit of a history. So this does not go well. He is not happy about this. But it's their romance. Some other secrets come out. She helps him. They have to go away for a weekend. And anyway, it just is a cute romance. Then I read Playing to Win by Stacey Lynn. And I gave this three stars. But I honestly don't remember much about it. Um... I know they had a one night stand in college and now Jude I think is a hockey player. Oh yeah. He got hurt in a recent game and so he is sent back to his hometown to like rehab and he is going to rehab at the place where Katie is a physical therapist. Um, so they're not supposed to be dating even though she, he's not her client. It's still kind of like forbidden off limits but they can't help it and they do. It was fine. Okay, then I read Tangled by Laura Pavlov. This is book two in the Willow Springs series. This is Gigi's story. Gigi has always had a crush on her older brother's best friend. Um, and she is now going to the same college as him. But he is very protective of her. And her brother keeps telling Gray to be protective of her and look out for her. Um, but, like, it's overly so. Like, roll your eyes overly so. Um, and so he keeps fighting his attraction to her because he knows that he... Um, is supposed to be protecting her and he is a playboy and he's like I should even be protecting you from myself. It's their romance. Yeah. Okay then I read Charmed by Laura Pavlov which is book three. Um, this is Mora or Mara's story. She gets a job interning at her family rival's company and she's terrified of what her dad is going to think about it. And these families really hate each other and it has started I think even from their grandparents. Um, but this is the top advertising firm in Dallas and so she knows she can't say no. 
sorry my daughter woke up I'm not really sure what I was saying I know that the company is the top advertising firm in the state I believe and she was nominated by her professors or her university and so she is super it's like a big honor so she's like I can't turn this down I want to do this I want this job um it just is an issue because of their family rivalry and so her boss um is I think just a few years older than her it might be an age gap but he definitely knows who she is um and it is their romance and he like has a really big grudge against her and her family and he slowly starts to realize that it is misplaced and that she is not the problem and they kind of bury some of their grandparents history and some other things that he um, has kind of blamed her family for as well um it was good again another three star read from this series yeah okay then I read the I can't remember the name of the duet, but Savage Pride and Silent Prejudice by Jill Ramsower, Rams, whatever. This is a mafia Pride and Prejudice retelling. It sounded fabulous. I liked the premise of it. She, her family like lives on the property of the family that they work for. And I think the family they work for is like head of the mafia or like really high up in mo in the mafia. Um, and then her dad is also a part of the mafia, but he's never been like promoted within it and um anyway it is her romance with one of the guys who grew up living in this house his dad the like one of the heads of the mafia or the head I honestly don't remember um has passed away and so he has come home for the funeral and to kind of like take over and it's their romance they had a thing when they were younger there's a section where it tries to make you think it's a love triangle it's very much not it's very clear the whole time who it is um there were so many secrets in this book. I just was over it. Um, it was very drama heavy. It felt so proper E and it just, I don't know. I gave it three stars. Then I read An Arc of Whispers of You by Catherine Cowles. We all know I loved this book. I gave it five stars. Um, this is a romantic suspense. It's the start of a new series from her. Um, Holt is, he like runs or owns a security company and he comes back to his hometown basically when they were in high school he and his high school girlfriend had this traumatic experience happen and he was not there when it happened but it was supposed to be and so he harbors a lot of guilt because he thinks that he was not there to protect her from it when really he would have just been hurt if he was there and so he kind of leaves town after they graduate and like 10 years later he's back in town and of course they run into each other and it's their romance. It's a second chance romance. I loved the second chance romance aspect of this. Um, there's a lot of suspense in this book. Catherine Cowles always has a lot of suspense in her books, but sometimes it's just kind of thrown, thrown in at the end. Sometimes it's woven throughout. This one, it's definitely woven throughout. It's definitely um, a little bit heavier on the suspense than some of her other books, but I really loved it. I also really loved the romance. I feel like there was definitely enough romance to keep this story moving. And um, yeah, I really liked it and I'm excited for the next books in the series. Then I read Founded on Goodbye by Kat Singleton. Um, this author is going to be at Reader's Take Denver and so I picked up a book by her um, not expecting to love it as much as I did. I gave this book five stars. I loved it so much. This is the story of a rock star and and one of his backup dancers who is hired to break his heart. Um, he his first album was he wrote right after he broke up with his ex-girlfriend and so super emotional and was just like really good music. His second album was not as good or didn't sell as well and so they think that he um, writes the more emotional better music when he is heartbroken and so they hire this girl to fall in love with him and break his heart and she is hesitant at first but ends up agreeing because she wants to move up in her career in her dancing career and she knows this will open a lot of doors for her and she thinks there's no way he will even look twice at her romantically and so there's no way that it will even happen well of course he does and it's their romance and I really liked the way it was done of course obviously we know that there is this big secret that is just going to come out the whole time you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop and usually I don't like that in a romance but this one was done so well I really 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 loved it. 
Then I read Sealed by Laura Pavlov, which is book four in the Willow Springs series. I haven't read book five yet, but book four. Um, this was my favorite in the series so far. Coco needs a date to her sister's wedding, and so she asks the new bar owner who has a motorcycle and tattoos and is a single dad, basically all the things her family won't love um and she calls her boyfriend big sexy to her family and so she brings him home and they make a contract of all the rules they're going to follow um in order to not make this be more than it is well they keep amending the contract as things go because obviously it turns into more this book would have been like four and a half five stars for me but there is a miscommunication at the end and i didn't like how quickly she jumped to conclusions and then believed that and wouldn't hear him out. Um, it was something with his ex who she already has talked to him about and known that he, you know, is not interested in her or whatever, but like one little thing happens and she goes back on everything he's told her about his ex. Um, had they not ever talked about her, his ex, maybe I could understand it and see it, but they definitely had. And so I just didn't love the way that was done. But, um, Otherwise, I loved this book. Then I read an arc of The Duke Gets Even by Joanna Shoup. I gave this one four stars. So this is the Duke's book. He finally gets a story. He has kind of had something with all three of the girls in the fr friend group so far. And so this is his romance with the last girl in the friend group. This is Nellie. Nellie is the one who kind of is a little more free-spirited. And so they accidentally meet one night when they're both swimming in the ocean. And she is naked. And so they have a little bit of an encounter. And they make plans to meet up later. But when they both get back to the house party, Party the next day they realize who each other is and they're like oh no this can't go any farther because at the time he is supposed to be courting and proposing to one of her best friends um and so they decide this isn't going to go anywhere it does and it turns into a very steamy relationship the steam in this was great but that was kind of all that was really happening for a majority of the book the end of the book we see her being a big advocate advocate for women's rights and women's reproductive rights and he um we see like how much he loves her and how much he cares for her and so I loved that part of the book but getting to it was just kind of not much was happening so, so I gave it four stars then I read An Optimist Guide to Heartbreak by Jennifer Hartman. This is book one in the duet, so it does not end on happy ending. I'm currently in the middle of book two, um, but I did give this one five stars. So this is Cal and Lucy's story. They used to be neighbors and good friends when they were younger. Lucy was best friends with Cal's sister, Emma. Um, we don't know a whole lot. This book has a lot of unanswered questions. We know that Emma is gone, but we don't know how or why. Um, and there are some other factors in here that, um, like loss factors. Anyway, this is their romance. Cal is super grumpy and Lucy is his sunshine. They're reconnected nine years later and he doesn't want her there, doesn't want a relationship with her, but it ends up being one of the best things for him. I don't want to say too much more because I don't remember like what's book one, but what's book two and I don't want to spoil anything, but um, I loved this and I gave it five stars. Okay, and then the last book of the month I read was Founded on Temptation by Kat Singleton. This is book two in the mixtape series. This one I didn't love as much. I gave this one three stars. This one is... Sebastian who is the rock star's bodyguard and Riley who is the heroine of the other book the backup dancer's best friend um but so much of this story followed the character the main characters from book one and it wasn't just like they were side characters and we got to see them and they were happy and everything was great it was like it was a continuation of their story or like a different viewpoint of the end of that book through these characters' eyes, but like I wanted more of Sebastian and Riley's romance, and I didn't feel like we really got that. We do see some things from Sebastian's past and him having to overcome that and open up to Riley about it, and so I liked that aspect of the story and the depth that we got there, but um, I just wanted to see more of their romance and them getting to know each other as people instead of them helping their friends all the time. Um, like I said, I liked the other characters and liked seeing them as side characters, but they should have stayed aside characters. Um, anyway, so that is my January wrap up. Those are all the books I read in January. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.